Namaste everyone, this is Pooja. In today's video, I'm going to show how I am preparing for PC practicals. So, as most of you know, for uh, 2021, PC is going to be virtual. Uh, and that's why most of us are practicing on Zoom or, you know, just on virtual platforms just so that we can prepare ourselves. So this video is for educational purposes only. It's intended for physiotherapy students. This is not some sort of, you know, health advice that should be taken, uh, you know, by other uh, people. It's just for PT students. Uh, that being said, uh, this is going to be a 10 minute station that I'm practicing. Uh, I'll just give you the case scenario and then I'll get started with it. Okay, so case scenario here is patient is a young uh, boy and is suffering from exercise induced asthma. You are supposed to advise the patient's father regarding his condition and what precautions uh, he should take. This is a 10 minute station and it's 8 plus 2. So at, at the 8 minute mark, the father is going to ask me a question and I'll respond to that. So that's our case scenario. Um, let's get started. Hi. Hey, hi. Hi, my name is Pooja. I'm a resident physiotherapist. Uh, for today's session, I read your chart. It says that you're here in concerns to your child's uh, recent diagnosis with exercise-induced asthma. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Uh, can I know your preferred name? My name is Nick. And can I know your son's name as well? His name is Max. Okay, and how old, how old is Max? Uh, he's 10. Oh, it's 10 years old. Okay. Uh, so for today's session, what I was planning to do is that I'll give you a brief on what exercise induced asthma is, what sort of symptoms you will be seeing, what sort of modification we can do in Max's lifestyle so that, you know, he can cope up with the diagnosis better. Um, so is that okay if I, you know, talk about it a little bit? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I have your consent to go ahead, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so if at any point in time, if you don't understand or if you want me to stop or you're you know, just not comfortable, you want me to, uh, you know, talk about it, do let me know and we can discuss that. Sure. Okay. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, asthma is um, a condition wherein your body reacts to something. Usually the airways are the most reactive. So let's say there is an allergen like dust or pollen. Uh, if, the, if the child comes in contact or if an, an, any individual who has asthma comes in contact with these allergens, uh, the, there's a hyper responsiveness of the airways. So what happens is because it's hyper responsive, uh, there's inflammatory changes and sometimes there's narrowing of the airways. So the airway is narrow and because of that, you know, there's difficulty breathing, there could be feeling of chest tightness. Also, uh, due to this reaction, there could also be increase in mucus production that could lead to, you know, coughing um, and wheezing sounds sometimes because of the narrowing of the airway. So when we're talking about exercise induced asthma, it's basically when there is, when you're when an individual does vigorous activities or is you know playing a sport or is doing some exercise that increases his body temperature or that sort of triggers this asthmatic attack okay, okay. Uh, am i clear so far yes yeah so uh the uh, the common allergens uh that are identified so far are pollen dust animal fur uh just you know mold uh, these are all extrinsic factors, intrinsic factors like, you know, uh, like, as I said, if he's going through any strenuous activity or if he's undergoing any stress, that could also trigger an asthmatic attack. Uh, asthma could sometimes also be, you know, inherited. Um, and also, it could be worsened in cold conditions, uh, you know, like cold air could exacerbate uh, the condition. So these are, uh, you know, just a brief about what asthma is. Um, and in terms of exercise induced asthma, uh, the best thing is that if we know that this is what, in terms of asthma, if you know what is triggering the asthmatic attack, the, uh, the first uh, idea is to eliminate that, uh, you know, that allergen or that activity that, that induces the asthmatic attack. So that's the first thing that we could do. Uh, the second thing that we could, uh, we usually do is we could focus on, you know, pacing of activities for specifically for exercise induced asthma, that you pace the activity. You, if uh, let's say Max has to play in a sport and he gets, uh, you know, he do, is not comfortable uh, playing like for 30 minutes at a stretch, he gets breathless. Then you could sort of break up that activity into 15 minutes. 
Um, so, can you tell me more about when was Max diagnosed with asthma? Uh, it happened before like a month. Okay, so he's recently been diagnosed. Uh, does he have any symptoms right now? Any uh, not right now, but if he plays soccer or if he's doing any activity, uh, then he gets sometimes an attack. Okay. Does he complain of you know coughing or wheezing or a shortness of breath, anything like that? Yes, he sometimes complains about shortness of breath. Okay, uh, and have you spoken to your physician about this? Uh, has your physician sub, uh, prescribed any drugs? Or any yeah, he products? gave uh, some inhaler. So uh, he told us to keep uh, keep the inhaler with him, and he can keep with him for all the time whenever, like wherever he goes for the school or at home. So yeah, that's what he advises. Exactly. So that's a really good advice and that's something that you should be on top of. Uh, so as we said, the first thing, eliminate the allergen. The second thing is that you can pace activities for his exercise and use asthma. The third thing is that inhalers or whatever uh, bronchodilators his physician and his pediatrician have prescribed, according to that dosage, uh, Max should know where they are uh, placed. So in case he gets an attack and he needs to tell his teachers or coaches, uh, so it should be in his backpack. Uh, he should know where it is placed. His teachers and his coaches should, uh, you know, know about his condition. So if something like this happens in school, they are aware about it. Um, and there are two different types of inhalers. One that he would he would be able to take regularly. The other one is like a relieving inhaler. So let's say things get bad and he is feeling shortness of breath even after you know a long period of time. Then these are the inhalers that he can use. So you could discuss this with the teachers and Max as well. Um, and other than that, uh, there are certain uh, breathing exercises that he could do. Uh, let's say, you know, does, does, do you know um, how soon does Max get, uh, uh, you know, shortness of breath when he's into a game? Like 15 minutes, so, 20 minutes? Yeah, if you play like 20 minutes at a stretch, then he gets like shortness of breath. He cannot play anymore and he needs to sit down for a while then only he can go back okay uh, so in in certain in these sort of scenarios what you can do is uh, you need to sort of prepare him ahead of time so you could let him know that the first thing that he has to do let's say he's played for 20 minutes 25 minutes now he feels shortness of breath he has to remove himself from the game he has to go to a place sit down rest and once he's sitting down what he could do is uh, you know he could lean forward uh, and this is called a tripod position. So he's sort of basically relaxing his upper extremities, relaxing these muscles, and he's trying to breathe in a relaxed manner. So he's going to do deep breathing. Uh, so he's going to breathe in through his nose and he's going to breathe out through his mouth. So you could sort of give him cues like, you know, smell a rose and blow a candle. Uh, you know, those sort of things children can easily understand. And this is uh, sort of, you know, to help him calm down, to help him breathe deeper. So that also, you know, that the, he get, he feels a little bit more relaxed. So this is called tripod positioning. If he cannot sit, he can lean against, you know, uh, a table or a wall and sort of relax and so the idea is he just has to bend forward and then sort of breathe in through his nose and breathe out through his mouth uh, and make sure that he's pursing his lips okay okay so that's called first lip breathing uh, i'll give you a handout with all the details so you know you could show it to him as well um, other than that exercise induce uh, so let's say he does this and uh, usually exercise induced asthma the symptoms take 25 to 30 minutes to subside even after that, his symptoms don't subside, then then it's a good idea to sort of, you know, use his inhalers. Uh, so he could use the inhaler and relax. Um, so he could do that as well. Uh, so again, with exercise induced asthma, the good thing is that as he ages, uh, the lung capacities increase, right? Uh, and that means that, you know, as his lungs uh, like as he grows, they would become a little bit, you know, larger, his capacity would increase. And with endurance training and breathing exercises, we can make sure that, you know, he doesn't get the asthmatic attack so frequently or he could play for longer time durations. Um, so, yeah, that's that's everything that I had to share. You have any questions for me? Uh, yeah, I have a question. So he loves to play soccer. Will he be able to play in the future? Yes. 
for sure so we do prefer that you know kids uh, they are active and if they are uh, in you know if they are on the game and if they like a sport definitely he should be playing it but there are certain modifications that need to be done so the first and big uh, foremost thing is his teachers and his coaches should know about his condition they should know where his inhalers are other than that he could also you know uh, you should i mean he could be taught about activity pacing let's say he uh, is going to play a game instead of playing the whole game in one go if he plays for 20 25 minutes takes a break and then plays again for 20 minutes that's that's something that we could do so that you know he is not um, he doesn't go through the shortness of breath uh, he doesn't get those asthmatic attacks Uh, but definitely he can play as he grows strong as he grows up uh, because usually asthma uh, exercise induced asthma uh, it's usually an age related condition so you see it with uh, young children uh, till their adolescence age as they grow it does get better so with proper training with proper breathing exercises and endurance exercises he would definitely be able to participate in whatever game he likes okay okay do you have any other questions for me uh no that was my main concerns yeah thank you so much for uh, giving me this much advice sure uh so today we discussed what asthma is what are the symptoms uh, you know wheezing and coughing uh shortness of breath chest discomfort or uh, you know chest pain sometimes uh what can trigger so possible uh, allergens uh you know cold weather exercise we just we just discussed that uh, the breathing exercises that max could do deep breathing and pursed lip breathing uh and we also discuss what he needs to do in terms of if something happens at his school or when he's playing okay i'll be giving you a handout uh but again if you have any other questions don't uh hesitate to contact me sure okay thank you so thank much thank you so much thank you So that was my answer to the practice question for asthma and how this is what I would do if I get the question in the exam. Uh this is a sample question. So I do appreciate your feedback. Uh I saw the video and I thought that I should work a little bit more on organizing. So you know I should have like clear headings as to you know this is what I wanted to say. I was a little bit here and there but I think it was pretty okay. So do ki uh, you do let me know how I did in the comment section. And yeah, I'll I'll just share more videos of me practicing and the hopes that you know you could get some reference from that. So take care and see you guys next video.